Our verse for today is taken from the book of Wisdom, chapter 2, verse 12. Let us lie in wait for the righteous man, because he is inconvenient to us and opposes our actions. He reproaches us for sins against our training. The author of the book of Wisdom, who wrote about 50 years before the coming of Christ, presents a true picture of what happens in our daily lives. In this scenario, he pits two groups of persons against each other, the ungodly or the wicked and the righteous. Beloved in Christ, life is full of opposites, love and hate, light and darkness, good and evil, righteousness and ungodliness. In this verse, the author makes the ungodly to speak in a direct speech. This speaker is reflected in Wisdom chapter 1 verse 16 and also in chapter 2 verse 1. In this verse, an action is proposed. It says, let us lie in wait. Now, to lie in wait describes a situation of watching out for an enemy or enemies and a potential victim, preparing to launch an attack against them. So the wicked invited themselves to watch and to attack the righteous. But what is the crime of the righteous? The fact that one is righteous means to be morally upright, justifiable, even impeccable. And we see how people gather to form wicked people's association. This text, which echoes the suffering servant in Isaiah 50 to 53, is already an anticipation of the treatment that Jesus would receive in the hands of the Jewish authorities, where we witness the height of gang up against the innocent, as we see in the partial narrative. In this our verse, the wicked put forward four charges against the righteous. One, he is inconvenient to us. Two, opposes our actions. Three, he reproaches us for our sins against the law. Four, accuses us of sins against our training. We see here the wicked presenting even the manifesto of the righteous. Dear friends, those who thrive in darkness are afraid of light. Are you thriving in darkness? Are your deeds evil? Is wickedness your identity marker? Are you so threatened by the presence of good and upright people in your life? If so, you need conversion and repentance for your deeds are evil. Beloved in Christ, if your life does not inconvenience the wicked, if your life is not an opposition to the wickedness of the wicked, if your life is not a reproach to the sinfulness of the unrighteous, if your life is not a way of accusing the unrighteousness of evil and wicked people around you, in your families, in your offices, in your associations, your political parties, in your churches, then your Christianity is a faint project and a wasted effort. Evil continues to thrive because good people like you hide their goodness and righteousness for fear of the Jews. Jesus is our model. He maintained his identity and remained focused to the end. And God exalted him. We are all invited in Hebrews 12 verse 1. Let us look up to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Dear friends, do not be afraid or dismayed. Because of the gang ups against you, your good deeds and your goodness is a threat to the evil people around you. Jesus speaks to you in Matthew 5, 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The wicked will end in destruction. And Isaiah 57, 21 reminds us, there is no peace for the wicked. Yes, no peace for the wicked. And Proverbs 14, 34 tells us, righteousness exalts a nation. May God raise you up as a righteous stock. And may every wicked branch that sprouts around you be cut off. And may every evil machination around you be destroyed by the power of the word of God alive in you. Amen. Peace be with you.